we spent a couple of days here at Olympic National Park and there's so many beautiful places to paint. You've got the high alpine mountains and you've got these wonderful beaches. I knew once I stepped foot on this beach that this was the place I was going to paint. This place is absolutely beautiful. It just says Pacific Northwest Coast with these beautiful rocks and these formations and these wonderful trees coming down to the beach. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to very quickly sketch them in. These wonderful trees. Now I do like all of these rocks over on the left hand side. And I want to show you by adding just more turpentine and using the same color I can actually create a little bit of value for my background mountain. Okay, now with the base of my hillside done, I'm going to sketch in my lagoon. And what I want to pay attention to are the reflections in the lagoon. There's an area of the lagoon that's a little darker and there's an area of the lagoon that's a little lighter. These are all my dark reflections in my lagoon in the foreground. And now I'm going to add a lot more turpentine to my color. And I'm going to go up and down in my light area. Now I'm going to lay in a darker version of my color. Again, this is the Burnt Sienna Cobalt Blue. I'm going to lay in the base for all of my foliage on the right. These wonderful bushes coming down to this rocky shore. And now with that done, we're going to start actually laying in the sketch for our foreground trees. Now I'm going to make sure that these trunks are exactly where I want them. So I'm going to spend some time really looking at my model here. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of this beach in the foreground in front of my lagoon. Lots of turpentine here. Just very quickly paint in your beach. This will direct the viewer right into my central focal area. Now with all of my sketching, we're ready to start painting. I'm going to squeeze out white onto my palette. And I want to squeeze out quite a bit so that I don't have to constantly be refreshing my paint. What you first want to do is you want to add a little bit of gray into your sky so that you can adjust it to be either warmer or cooler than what you have on your painting. If you look very closely into fog, you'll notice that the fog has all different types of values. I do want to bring the viewer to the center area. In that area, I'm going to add more yellow and I'm going to take this light color and I'm going to brush it into my sketch. And my sketch will actually be the base for my, my foliage and my trees. I'm going to paint right over my sketch for my trees in the foreground since these will be fairly opaque on top of my sky. I'm applying thick brush strokes back here just to give my sky some texture. Beginning students have a tendency to want to make everything flat. But we're not painting a barn. What we're doing is that we're creating an, an oil painting that has texture to it. And what you should do is squint your eyes when you're painting so that you're more aware of the value changes as opposed to all of the brush strokes. And you want to change the brush strokes constantly. I'm applying little scents of thicker fog, slightly at a diagonal, to help create the feeling of movement from my trees into this part of the painting. Very subtle. Slowly bring it down on the right creates movement. I'm often asked what really makes a beginning painting look professional. And it's just a combination of all these little techniques. Hundreds of little, little things that you're aware of while you're painting that make your painting professional. And the way that you achieve it is lots of practice. Okay, now with our sky done, we're ready to start working on our main rock area in the distance. 
I'm just going to take exactly the same color that we mixed for the sky, and that was the three colors, red, yellow, and blue, with white, and I'm going to just add a darker variation of that. So with less white in exactly the same color, we're going to start working on our background island. Now you want to make sure that the value is correct. So what you want to do is adjust the color back and forth until you think you've got the right value. And the good way to judge that is actually paint this color right up to the sky. And then take a moment and really study to see whether or not the color changes between the sky and the mountain itself are correct. Now I'm going to go back into my sky and just correct a little bit of my drawing. Don't be afraid to constantly correct your drawing. If you know that you can correct and that everything you lay down should be a little bit of a mistake and you constantly just correct it, it's not quite so intimidating. So I'm correcting my sketch ever so slightly. carefully working around my sketch for my rocks and along the top area of my island it's a little greener so I'm going to add a little bit more blue and a little bit more yellow again constantly correcting my my value it's a greenish gray shade at one time this island here was actually part of the mainland. These islands are called sea stacks. And what happens is that through time and erosion, the ocean slowly eats away at the base of these rocks, creating these islands. And that's why you have all these foliage up on the top. At one time, this whole thing was connected. These are called sea stacks. I'm going to pull my brush stroke up very lightly to create the illusion of soft bushes on top of these rocks. And I want to keep the edges very soft. As the day progresses and as this fog lifts, these islands become more and more exposed, showing more and more detail. We want to put in some of the detail, but we also want to give the illusion of what this place looked like a few minutes ago when the fog was a little heavier. As an artist, you want to make the decision of what to leave in your painting as the subject changes and what to alter in your painting as the subject changes. Being an outdoor painter, your subject constantly changes and you need to develop a sense of what you would like to keep and what you like to eliminate. Remember, when you go home, nobody is going to compare your efforts to a photograph. You have the kind of control that you can make some decisions that if you liked it a very foggy morning and you wanted to capture that, then you can, in your head, maintain that feeling and just pick out the detail that you wish to have exposed out of the fog. But after painting outdoors for a while and the fog starts to lift, you may decide to change your painting at this point and bring in a little bit more detail. Part of being an artist is to be able to make those kinds of decisions. And you get good at making those kinds of decisions by going outdoors and practicing a lot. Now with my back island done, I'm going to work on the next row of rocks. These rocks lie right along the base of the beach. They're a lot darker, but they're not as dark as the foreground. So I want to add more gray. And again, constantly checking my value to my sky. I'm going to start laying the base for these rocks. These will automatically give depth in an instant. And you'll see that this background island just disappears into the background as these rocks come forward.
the exciting thing of painting is watching your own painting develop right before your eyes. I'm going to do this relatively quickly, just flat values. And then I'm going to step back to see whether or not these values are correct. We may need a little bit more white or a little bit more dark into them. But I want to make sure that my background island just disappears into the background. Also taking a little bit of time to make sure that these shapes are correct. Sometimes I have to re-sketch my drawing a little bit. That's why it's always good to start off with a really good sketch. You need to make less corrections as you go along. And while I'm at it, I'm going to lay a little bit of my beach in. Just to plant these rocks down. Now I'm going to step back to see whether or not that background island disappears enough or do I need to make a few changes. I'm going to put a little bit more gray along these rocks and soften the edges a little bit. Looking very closely at my subject matter, the base of my mountain here disappears in a little heavier dense fog. Now if this fog should lift, I'm relatively committed to leaving that because I like that feeling. I'm going to put in a little hint of the water also between my rocks. I'm indicating a little bit of the turbulence in the water, a few little waves. I'm going to go back in and work the edge of my rock a little bit. There's also a little tiny rock jutting out right at the edge my bank. And now I'm going to place a little bit more detail on my rocks. I've just added a little bit of white to exactly the same color I painted them in. And just with a few strong strokes I can give these rocks dimension. Beginning students oftentimes are frightened of rocks. And they're really quite easy, as long as you look at them as being three-dimensional objects, which means that they have a top, a side, and a bottom. I oftentimes tell students, think of them as boxes. So you have a side of a box, and a side of a box, and a bottom of a box. Keep the strokes fairly loose. I've added a little bit of yellow to my color and notice that there's a little yellowish moss growing on the tip of this rock. And with a few short strokes I can get that detail. And you just want some bold strokes. We're not after a photorealistic version of what we see. We just want to capture some of the little nuances. The moss on the rocks, the edges of the rocks. We're just trying to capture the essence of what we see. And the rocks have a lot of texture to them, so paint them with a lot of texture. Let the brush hit and glide. There's a little bit of beach peeking through, so I'm going to add a little bit more white to the same color. Now I'm working the beach around my sketch for my logs, my driftwood in the background. I'm leaving the sketch color as the base of my shadow color for my driftwood. 
I'm going to bring the beach right down to my lagoon. Now what I want to do is take this exact same color and start painting the shoreline on the opposite side of my lagoon. I want to take the lighter color towards the center of my painting and slowly get it darker as it goes to the right. Bringing more light towards the center of my bank and slowly getting darker as it goes to the right. I'm purposely going to add a brighter light right in the center. I want my light to hit these rocks a little brighter. This is my main focal area, so I want to keep this brightest. Working around all of these driftwood logs and just painting the shore. Now with my shoreline done, I'm going to take that exact same color and add lots of white to it. What I want to create is a real, real bright light color for my reflection from my sky. And I'm going to mix yellow with my white and in an up and down fashion start painting in my lagoon. Lots of paint and up and down strokes. Remember, keep it very, very bright and very, very light, especially towards the center where I lighten the sand up around my lagoon. I want to also lighten the water in that area too. Now, as my water comes more to the foreground, I'm going to introduce more gray. This helps keep the viewer towards the center of my painting. Olympic National Park is actually quite close to Seattle, but yet you could still have this park to yourself. It's absolutely a beautiful place for artists to come. We've had this beach all to ourselves all morning. Very thick, thick paint. I'm using lots of paint at this point. I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. And notice I'm still going in a vertical motion. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and I'm going to take my dark gray and I'm going to introduce a little bit of green by mixing blue and yellow together. And this lagoon has a greenish warm color to it. And I'm going to paint it darker and I do that by just adding more gray to it. It's a good idea to mix up a lot of gray before you start painting, and that way it's always there available. And again, my gray is mixed up out of my red, yellow, and blue colors together with no white. And I'm painting this dark green lagoon. Beautiful color. This is actually fresh water. It's one of the many rivers that flow into the ocean in this area. That's what I think is so fascinating about Olympic National Park. It's not just ocean and it's not just beautiful mountains, but it's the lush green foliage and the rivers, the water in this area that flow down into the ocean, make it a spectacular place to visit. And now with my lagoon painted in as a base, I'm going to switch to a palette knife. Now, I oftentimes use palette knives for mixing painting, 
but it's absolutely great to paint with. Oftentimes, I will actually go home if I forget my palette knife because I feel it's such an important tool to have in my box. And I'm going to mix up that light gray color that I used for my light part of my lagoon, and I'm going to pick it up with my palette knife. And when I pick it up with my palette knife, I'm only going to use just the edge of the knife, not the entire bottom of the knife, but just the edge so that I can create a nice hard edge onto my canvas. Just scrape the paint on the edge of the knife. I hold the knife at a 45 degree angle, pick up the paint, and apply it straight onto my canvas. And just drag the knife very carefully across your water, horizontally. Remember the reflections were done vertically. Your highlights are done horizontally. And this is what's going to create the illusion of the lagoon being flat. You can put a little sense of zigzag. But every one of these little lines that you put in indicate a little ripple of light reflecting the fog. Bring a little along the edge. I love listening to all the wildlife in the background while I paint. There's no need to bring a stereo with you. There's plenty of music out in nature. And then very lightly brush over with your knife just to take the edge off. Some of these areas, pretty flat reflection. And so just let them blend together. Some areas definitely have a little more texture on them. You just want to take the little, the little edges off. You can also go back in and touch up a little bit also just by dragging in a little bit of the dark with a small brush. And now I want to put in a little bit more gray, bring the edge of my lagoon back in. And we're ready to start painting in some of the logs in our beach. And now with our lagoon done, we're ready to start painting in our driftwood. We're going to use the same brush, and we're going to mix up a dark version of gray. We're going to be mixing up all three colors, a little bit more yellow and red to create kind of a brownish color. And what we want to do is we want to create the shadows of the driftwood first. Remember in oil painting, we work from dark to light. So when in doubt, always start off with the shadows, the darkest areas, and then we put the highlight on top of that. Now this is the base coat for our driftwood. And I'm not going to look at every log and place it just where I see it. And just with short strokes, start putting in all of these lines of driftwood. Remember the next storm that comes in is going to move all these logs. So we don't have to worry about being 100% accurate. The thing that you do have to be accurate about is that these logs in the background are further back than the logs in the foreground, so therefore they're smaller. So don't put in long brush strokes, but rather a whole series of short brush strokes. As we get towards the front, over here on the left, the brush strokes become longer. I'm changing between grays and brown grays, pretty much picking up anything that I have on my palette. And these are just the 
shadow areas for my driftwood, I'm going to put highlights in on top of them. And these driftwood logs in the front are long. And notice those long brush strokes I'm putting in now. And again, we're putting these in a little different than what we see just because we want to create movement. If you notice, we have this strong line here, and then we have these lines here. I'm going to, to put in some lines in this direction to help point the viewer into the painting. I'm going to do those a little lighter so you can just see what I did. I'm going to point these logs this way so that I have logs going off to the left logs pointing in and logs laying down. And again, I'm in control of what's going on out there. I'm not necessarily bound to what I'm seeing. And some of these driftwood logs have branches sticking out of them. Getting in a little more shadows. We do want them to pop out, so they'll have to have a lot of light on them. And we may even do something with palette knife with them also to make them pop out. You can add a little bit more paint on the tip of your brush. That will help get the paint to flow off. Since the paint has since the painting has a lot of paint on it, sometimes you have to paint a little thicker, which means a little bit more paint at the tip of the brush to make it stick. Sometimes to make things stick when you're putting on highlights, you'll actually put the highlights on with a palette knife because the paint starts getting so thick as you get further along.